Today we are reading Part 2 of Hanu's Adventure, a limited edition cartoon storybook released by Clock Studios, narrating a tale where Hanu shrinks in size and saves Dreamville. The book includes occasional peculiar dialogue interspersed throughout. Part 2 Chapter 1 Professor Owl struggles to flap his wings, finally returning Brother Hanu to Dreamville. The once prosperous Dreamville lay in a state of despair, with ugly sculptures of boss stone scattered everywhere. Crocodiles roam the streets, brazenly causing trouble for the residents. They wreaked havoc, destroying the houses that the origami birds meticulously built, kicked over Miss Note's splendid stage, gulped down all of Mr. Soda's sodas, and messing around with Old Man Wood's carefully trimmed canopy. Professor. The crocodiles have invaded the dreamscape. Really? Well, maybe they've made an unwise choice. Witnessing the chaotic scene, Brother Hanu recalled the time when this place was once the Nightmareville, letting out a hmm in fury. He vowed to defeat the villainous boss stone despite his diminished size. Professor Owl, witnessing his student being bullied, also grew furious. Hoot hoot! Well, we'll teach the cursed boss stone a lesson. Brother Hanu, let me assist you. Professor Owl soared to the rooftop of the town hotel, a location hidden from boss stone's view. He hooted, summoning all the origami birds in town. These little helpers painted the sky with vibrant colors. Professor, how did you manage to let the nightingale? <laughs> Have faith in these youngsters. No one knows about weapons in the dreamscape better than they do. Boss Stone and his minions were taken aback by the overwhelming number of origami birds. They've never seen so many birds. Professor Owl handed them some secret blueprints, and after reading them, the birds wiped away their tears, regained their spirits, and began working on top of the houses occupied by Boss Stone. Before Boss Stone could react, the entire town underwent a transformation thanks to the origami birds. Mr. Soda's bottle shack turned into a formidable cannon, Miss Note's gala cruise became a battleship, and even Old Man Wood's oak mansion transformed into a wooden dinosaur ready to devour crocodiles. This is so cool, Professor. We should make more of these in a the dreamscape. No. Boss Stone and his minions trembled in terror overwhelmed by the creations of the origami birds. They sought refuge inside Town Hotel. This caused Professor Owl to worry. The hotel was the most magnificent building in Dreamville and the most profitable business in town. It must not be damaged. Seeing the formidable weapons halting at the gate, hesitant to attack, Boss Stone understood the birds' worries and let out a sinister laughter. Ha ha ha! You dare not attack me, you stupid birds! Minions, come to me. Toss some lit matches and torch these monsters down to ashes. The crocodiles hurled the ignited matches at the origami bird's weapons, reducing them to ashes. Repelling them in the dreamscape is just a temporary solution. Even if we defeat the crocodiles here, our firepower disadvantage in reality remains desperate. If we lose the central sector, all the kids in Dreamville will be in danger. Don't worry, Professor. We still have Hanunu. Oh right, Brother Hanu has returned, and he is the protagonist of this tale. However, with his tiny size, how is Brother Hanu expected to defeat those colossal crocodiles with their fearsome jaws? Professor Owl furrowed his brow. The origami birds sighed with concern, and even Clocky, transformed into a statue, reflected worry in his eyes. However, Brother Hanu remained resolute his expression unwavering as he silently advanced towards the hotel. He let out a confident, hmm. Part 2, Chapter 2 Most of their forces are probably deployed on the front lines, but they definitely have some troops guarding their main vessel. So be careful, Hanunu. Hanu infiltrated the hotel unarmed while Boss Stone's minions patrolled the corridors, fearful that someone might steal the treasures amassed by their boss here. Thanks to his small stature, Brother Hanu skillfully evaded the villains within the hotel, his eyes scanning for any signs of Boss Stone. 
Upon entering the lobby, Brother Hanu spotted Lieutenant Chitters, Boston's trusted sidekick. Lieutenant Chitters was an even larger crocodile than Boss Stone, creating an impenetrable barrier that not even a mosquito could pass through. Before a single shot from the Hanu launcher would have dealt with this big oaf. Now, however, Hanu needs to come up with a another plan. I trust your abilities, but with your current stature, best not go head to head with someone in high grade IPC battlesuit. What now? As Hanu hid atop a storage shelf to brainstorm, Lieutenant Chitter suddenly came walking over. Chit chit, hmm, I think I smell the scent of a wolf. Confronted with the approaching Lieutenant Chitters, Brother Hanu had no means of evasion. A clash became inevitable. Embracing himself for the battle, Brother Hanu lunged at Lieutenant Chitters. However, Lieutenant Chitters didn't even notice the tiny Brother Hanu and accidentally swallowed him whole in an instant. Had Brother Hanu been devoured? Chit, is something wrong with my nose? The dumb crocodile glanced left and right, scratching his head in confusion. Lieutenant Chitters felt something between his teeth but paid no mind. After all, this sloppy crocodile never bothered to floss his teeth, and that's how Brother Hanu escaped his jaws. Brother Hanu deftly maneuvered between Lieutenant Chitters' razor-sharp teeth and made his way through the dangerous mouth, hiding inside a tooth cavity. I told you not to engage in a head-on clash, Hanu knew. You really should have listened. All right, Professor. We both know his style. Well, now that you're inside the mecha, you won't rouse any suspicion from the guards, and the life support devices contained within will help you address your injuries. With that, Hanu found the best hiding spot. Part 2, Chapter 3 Brother Hanu managed to stay safe, but simply hiding in wouldn't cut it. He had to find Boss Stone and defeat him, or else Dreamville would have been taken over by the crocodiles. However, how could Brother Hanu locate Boss Stone while trapped inside Lieutenant Chitter's tooth cavity? Not to worry though, our cool hero Hanu will always find a way. Yeah, he always finds a way. After all, he's the head of the Bloodhounds and the legendary rebel who sparked countless revolutions. Inside Lieutenant Chitter's mouth, Brother Hanu meditated, but the crocodile's terrible breath assaulted his delicate nose. Unable to bear it any longer, he let out a disgusted hmm. Chit, Brother Hanu! I heard Brother Hanu's voice! The hmm startled Lieutenant Chitters, who anxiously searched every corner for Brother Hanu but to no avail. Watching Lieutenant Chitters' funny reaction, Brother Hanu came up with a brilliant idea. He kept making noises inside Lieutenant Chitters' mouth, confusing the crocodile more and more. They know someone has infiltrated their capital ship. A portion of their forces are returning to defend. Be careful, Hanu Nu but I think they won't expect to find you hiding in the armored mechs that are looking for the prisoner. Chit Chit, where are you, Brother Hanu? Lieutenant Chitters frantically searched, almost tearing the whole hotel upside down. He sensed Brother Hanu's presence right next to him, but couldn't find that cool dark figure, no matter what. Lieutenant, Brother Hanu's voice is coming from you. Lieutenant Chitters' sidekick noticed the situation and informed the not-so-brainy boss. Chit, could Brother Hanu be hiding on me? Lieutenant Chitter stripped himself naked, hoping to find Brother Hanu, but he was still nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Brother Hanu continued to make noises in his mouth, pushing Lieutenant Chitters closer to a mental breakdown. Chit, could it be that Brother Hanu has learned to become invisible? If that's the case, I must report to Boss Stone immediately. In a panicked state, Lieutenant Chitters raced up the stairs while naked, this was all part of Brother Hanu's plan, and soon he would confront Boss Stone with no effort on his own. The command center is on this floor. You really are a genius, Hanunu. Part 2, Chapter 4 Chit! Boss Stone, terrible news, Chit! Lieutenant Chitters burst into the opulent suite, shouting in panic. Boss Stone, still dreaming in his grand bubble bed, was abruptly awakened by the sight of a naked, chubby crocodile standing before him. What are you doing, you idiot? Seethes with fury, Boss Stone unleashed a powerful smack of his tail upon Lieutenant Chitter's face, knocking out his teeth. Brother Hanu, who had been hiding in a tooth cavity, was propelled out as well, seizing the opportunity 
Brother Hanu swiftly found refuge in the corner of Boss Stone's room, ready to strike like a wolf. The enemy's main forces are returning to reinforce. Hanunu, are you holding up well? A confident, hmm. Chit chit, Brother Hanu has returned, Boss Stone, and he's become invisible. I only heard his cool, hmm, but couldn't find him anywhere. Lieutenant Chitter's mention of the name Brother Hanu sent a shiver down Boss Stone's spine. That cursed Brother Hanu, I see. Now, get out of here, and next time, wear your pants before coming to me. After dismissing Lieutenant Chitters, Boss Stone grew increasingly anxious. Although he had shrunk Brother Hanu to a tiny size, he knew that Brother Hanu was still the valiant hero of Dreamville. Boss Stone unlocked his safe and looked at the Hanu launcher he had stashed away. He sighed in relief when he thought how Brother Hanu was even smaller than his own teeth right now. You hear this, Brother Hanu? Even if you come back, there is no way you can defeat me in your tiny form, Boss Stone bellowed, believing that Brother Hanu would hear his words. And indeed, Brother Hanu did. You found the ammunition warehouse, but even with enough ammunition, you just can't eliminate all these crocodiles, can you? A disdainful hern. Boss Stone returned to his dreams on his large bed, but uneasiness plagued him. He slept restlessly as his beautiful dream turned into a nightmare due to that scare. Emerging from the shadows, Brother Hanu stepped forward and opened the cabinet, which now appeared hundreds of times larger than him. He stepped inside. What did you say? Wait! Hanunu! No! A chuckling, hmm. <laughs> the Hanunu launcher was right in front of him. Tiny Brother Hanu struggled to carry the ammunition and loaded it into the weapon. Stop it, Hanunu! You can't do that! A disapproving, hmm. The noise from the cabinet awakened Boss Stone once again. Could it be that Brother Hanu is really here? Fear gripped Boss Stone as he gulped and rose from his bed. No fear, my brothers. He's now so tiny that we can crush him in a single bite. Boss Stone called out to all of his fellow crocodiles, all of whom huddled together in the room near the cabinet. Don't go, Hanunu. What should I do without you in Pinnacone? A resigned, hmm. The crocodiles opened the cabinet, only to be confronted by the dark muzzle of the launcher and tiny brother Hanu standing beside the firing button. I'm sure you can do it, because you are the watchmaker. Brother Hanu let out a cool hmm and stepped on the firing button. A cool hmm. A deafening explosion, followed by absolute silence. <laughs>